APP ah. by security FM. You get an autopsy of the keypad module. This will probably destroy it. It uses chip on glass, as I mentioned before, and it's designed to tear apart when you uh, do what we're about to do. I mean, there's really no other way of using it. We need the keypads, like a matrix keypad. Do you have a slightly smaller tip, Philip? Yeah, that's the wrong size. This one's, this one's eight in it. Okay, first part to come off is the main board. Uh, obviously, it's got a backup battery on it. Uh, there's a Xilinx Spartan FPGA. It is a XCS 05 XL. Yep, and this one will be a flash chip, most likely. Uh, yep. What about the one with the NCR 06 sticker? Uh, Some kind of custom. Probably custom, or they just don't want you to at a glance to know what the chip is. It almost looks like an MSP430 processor. Well, I haven't scrubbed the markings off it. It's unlikely to be an MSP430. It's an Atmel AT89LS54. I believe that's still an embedded processor. Probably okay. used to bootstrap the um, FPGA and load the data. Yeah. Yep. Looking at where it is. Processor, flash, and uh, FPGA. There you go. All right. Let's uh, see what's inside this rather robust-looking security module. When we remove it, probably 3,000 spare parts. <laughs> it might get nasty. I don't think there's going to be any way of really opening it in a non-destructive manner. These are not meant to be tampered with for obvious reasons because this is where you input the key to your your PIN number for your bank account. Uh, yeah, this is security territory. You wouldn't just expect an ATM to have a normal keypad like a phone on it with a nice circuit board on the back that you can hotwire. And that's, yeah, it's sort of the purpose of this exercise, but we're not hotwiring it to read somebody's key. We're hotwiring it to play video games. Or just rebuilding the board. Like I pull the board out and just use the push buttons and micro switches. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, it's potted. Hello. Hmm. <laughs> Up battery. Yeah. Do you know what? That battery probably just has a connection here and removing it erases the uh Yep. So any any encryption data that was in there is now gone. Be interesting to get that out and have a look. That's what I need to get next. An X ray machine. It's the only, I've had a flight recorder, I've got an ATM, I want an airport X ray machine that I can shove things like this through. Look at the stickers, NCR warranty stickers or certification stickers actually. If broken, not certified. Oh, it's broken now. <laughs> See what's under here. Yeah, we would have just erased it. That's a hard epoxy. Cut, cut the uh, through to red and see if we can lever that. It's probably going to pull all the components off the boards at the same time. And potentially break it, but it could be very cool. Mm, worth a shot. I'm not going to be able to do anything else with it. Now, if only it let magic smoke out to let you know you are... You <laughs> More like a die pack in the face. Well, that would have been <laughs> awkward. Yeah, don't... <laughs> I shouldn't say that. We're still getting into it. Maybe I should be wearing some sort of face protection here. No, yeah, don't worry. You're in the, I'm in the same boat as you. Okay, is that the board or is that a sub board? More screws, we'll find out. <laughs> I think this might be the board, it's yeah. just finding out how all these pins connect to the various keys. If it's not a regular 4x4 matrix board then it might be a bit tricky. Oh, yep, look at that. Hello. Oh, we... Uh, this could be tricky. There's a lot more buttons than there are buttons. Oh, it's Is got it to push both. Crossing. Oh, that's complicated. Yeah, it's sending two different signals at once. But basically, the keypad works as a an eight by four. 
Oh. Hmm. Might be easier to build my own board. <laughs> what do you reckon? I think that might be a fairly safe assumption. It's yeah. incredibly complicated. The oh, buttons and the pads. Oh. Ugh. Hello. Ah, uh, who was it gave it the name Mighty Carmots? What did they call it? Uh, human slime. Yeah, clean out the funk when you get it. Large, large amounts of human slime. Little die cast alley buttons. They're actually pretty decent buttons. Yeah, that's why I want it to work as it is. I don't want to have to make a whole new interface, but it looks like I'm going to have to probably retain that, but have a custom board behind it with some micro switches on it. Still very doable. Oh no, don't blow it, you'll make it airborne. You can just wash that under the tap in soapy water. I'll take it out here. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, no. Nah. All we want is a gaming keypad. Okay, use a human slime, don't blow up. No, it'll be well bonded to it. We need to uh, nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be safe. I am kind of. Yeah, this one. The, the machine has been out in the rain, so all the human slimes actually become human concrete. At least this works. Uh, sort of separates. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'll wash it under the tap. Yuck. Nothing like a bit of human concrete. Well, I think it's a fair, fair uh, assessment that this isn't going to be as easy, easy as I thought. Because we don't... Unless you can find a trace for each pin, we couldn't really do much with it. That might but be I might just, difficult. I mean, if I leave it with you for a while, I'm sure you'll find a way. Okay, so the dark sections are traces, mm. and the light sections are spaces. but it's all passing through that first. But we can always hijack the pin outputs here. It'd be a bit of work, but it could be done. You'd only need to use one of each. Oh, yeah, Just yeah. rig it as a... It's pointless making it work as it used to. It doesn't have to communicate with this. That's never going back in there. And that's, that's... never going to work again. Nah. I think we fried the uh, security module. Yeah. <laughs> which I believe was the design point of this. Oh, no, it's a really high security part of the machine. It's nothing to mess around with. They probably don't like that we're messing around with it. But we're not trying to get it to talk to the machine and read cards. We're trying to play video games. I'm turning it into one heck of an arcade machine. Yeah. I can see people asking me to do mods for theirs. Don't worry. <laughs> if we know how the loom goes together, it's not horribly it's not. difficult. It's probably on the easiest parts. Oh, this thing's interesting. I don't know how they've laid it out, but dismantling it positively destroys it. It is so well bonded, as soon as you break the resin off, it starts tearing traces from both sides of the board off. Well, it's actually a wrap. There's a wrap of flat flex going that way and a wrap going that way. So it is very well uh, protected and I'm guessing these traces interact with each other in a very unique way. So once you break one, it is completely useless. Or once you unplug it while it's uh, hot, obviously with the battery, the battery uh, retains memory, it's probably just wiped itself as soon as we unplugged it from the keyboard. Interesting stuff. Not that we actually want to know what's in there. And as Julian was saying, I'm sure a lot of uh, security execs just sighed, let out a good sigh of relief as we destroyed it. <laughs> It's probably best that that sort of thing doesn't get out. But then again, they wouldn't sell this sort of stuff to the general public if there were holes, blatant big security holes in it. And we, to be honest, I don't want to show people security holes in this sort of thing. At least not stuff to do with pins. But let's uh, continue ripping this module apart. This is fun. 
This is what you call a destructive Sunday. <laughs> the best kind of Sunday. Ooh, yeah, look at those traces. There's some really weird mojo going on in this thing. The overlapping layers, front and back, and the board. But I can see chips, and I can already see chip numbers, so let's cut the rest of this off and see what's going on in there. This is cool. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you break the casing, that's it. It's dead. So now that it's dead, let's make it even deader. Wait, is deader even a word? Uh, I choose to uh, acknowledge it as a word. Yep, it's a word. <laughs> okay, so that's the brains of the business. And uh, instead of trying to look up close on the camera, I'm actually going to use the uh, USB scope. So let's have a look. And I'll get Julian over to uh, give me a rough idea what some of these parts is. I can already see another Atmel processor in there, so looks to, sh looks to share the same processor as its little uh, daughter board that it plugged into. Okay, that looks better. It is a different code to what was on the other chip. I've got a, what that is. a rough idea what that is. I mean, I already know down here. There's a Texas Instruments. Digital signal processor. Yeah. That's the main, looks like the main brains of the operation. It will probably be the chip doing the encoding. Yeah. That looks like a flash chip. It's yeah. AMD. A AMD, yeah. Definitely. And that one there is a bit hard to see. Ah, oh, there we go. Not sure what that is. CY6214. Hmm. Let's see if I can get closer. You can see the leads where the battery connects to it. Connected. Yeah, it used to. That's a bit better. it up now. Cypress here. But what do you do? Oh, one element flower. Oh, here we go. Cypress. Oh, Cypress have a tech page on it. Let's have a look. Oh, good. Static RAM. Okay. Static RAM. So, if that's powered by the battery, that would lose all of its, um, yeah, look, that pad goes straight to... As, as soon as there. we cut the power to it, that's lost. the end of that. Yeah, so it's lost all of its info. That there's a flash RAM, 29, AM29DL. I oh, know I've seen this chip in so many devices, or at least variants of it. It goes straight into the... Uh, 29DL which? Oh, it's 162D. I've seen it in so many devices. It goes straight into the uh, DSP. It'll probably contain the program code for the DSP. Hmm. The DSP will be the one doing all the actual work, but the algorithms themselves will have been stored on that static RAM that is now... Dead. <laughs> blank. Yeah, it'd still work, but it's just blank. I imagine they'll have a setup tool that they program it with once they've installed it, like snaps the two together and then it leaves the factory like that as a set unit. And that Atmel chip down there. There's an AT89S. Hmm. AT89S There's a crystal there, 12 megahertz. Flat flex connector, that right. went to the... 8-bit uh... microcontroller. Okay. So just a standard 8-bit microcontroller. What would that be driving though? We've got the... Um... That would oh, no, we've got the signal. be receiving the, the key presses from the keypad. Oh, okay. And then it... And then feed them to the DSP. Yep. 
that there was the connector for the flat flex that went all around it with the very elaborate traces on it. What would they would they have been part of the encryption side of it, or would they have been a uh, shielding thing? Let's see if we can shove it under the uh, scope. Timing, I think. Timing. Timing. That's why motherboards and most high-speed cards you look at have the traces. Go they loop loop back in square. Because yeah, they've yeah. got to be the same length. That would slightly change the timing of the signals. And that would just probably enough have to, a lot to do with the encoding. Just enough to throw somebody off. Yeah, there's the end of that ribbon. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. But yeah, as soon as you crack that housing, it actually cracks the outermost layer of these um, traces, and you'd lose everything. Like, it's just dead. It also looks like it's, it is, if someone did get the housing open, that it moves all the functions of these pins. Hmm. Oh, that is complex. But, it's secure. That's the idea. Never ever make that thing work again. No, not that we want to. It's just uh, fascinating to see what they've done. Because, yeah, that, that side there is bonded to the plastic, the potting compound. As soon as I knocked that corner off, I saw the uh, traces in there. You can see them overlapping in the corners. That is very cleverly built. They did a good job. I'll give them credit for that. Physical obfuscation. <laughs> yeah. Ten points for that. Yep. Now I've got to clean up all the mess. And the back of the board doesn't show much. It's just more of the timing circuits and uh, traces. There isn't a single component on the back of the board.